Hey, digital investors, welcome back to another video where we cover everything that is going on inside of the crypto space. Hope you guys are all having a great day and we have some really good stuff to go over here. We have Visa and 50 crypto platforms to enable cryptocurrency payments at over 70 million merchants. We also have $395 billion investment firm buying a massive stake in Michael Saylor's MicroStrategy. They have now become the second largest holder of MicroStrategy stock. Here we have Bank of America establishes cryptocurrency research division, which is pretty bullish, right? It's establishing an entire crypto research division, which we've seen a lot of other companies do, right? Hiring people for crypto. We also have Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak calls Bitcoin the most amazing mathematical miracle. And we're going to start here with Square is building a Bitcoin hardware wallet. And here is how it will look. So if you guys are frequent viewers of the show and you would like to show some support, then make sure you tap the like button. It helps a ton for the YouTube algorithm. And with that said, we're going to get into it. Let's see what's going on with Square CEO Jack Dorsey. He says that the merchant payment platform will build a Bitcoin hardware wallet. In June, the head of the digital payments company unveiled that Square was exploring the idea of creating a hardware wallet for Bitcoin in collaboration with the crypto community, where they said that Square is considering making a hardware wallet for Bitcoin. If we do it, we would build it entirely in the open from software to hardware design and in collaboration with the community. Dorsey confirms the statements of Jesse Doro Gusker, I think that's about right. And that's Square's hardware lead, who said that the company plans to make Bitcoin custody more mainstream. And Jack pretty much did this through tweets, uh, where he basically just agreed with Jesse and said that they are doing it right here. We are doing it. Jesse's tweet was, we have decided to build a hardware wallet and service to make Bitcoin custody more mainstream. We'll continue to ask and answer questions in the open. This community's response to our thread about this project has been awesome, encouraging, yada yada. Dorsey also highlights that Square plans to integrate the hardware wallet with smartphones. He says that Square looks to run the hardware wallet using open source software while prioritizing ease of use and intuitiveness. Dorsey also says that the company will consider adding a feature that allows merchants who use Square's tools to automatically invest a portion of their daily revenue in Bitcoin, which I think that is pretty crazy, guys, right? So if you are basically a merchant or using Square to process payments, you can have a set amount of all your payments that come in. Say you want to take 10% of all your payments and automatically convert it to crypto. Uh, that, can, that could be huge, right? And uh, if people actually started adopting that and people willingly wanted to, hey, you know what? Every, you know, t all 10% of the sales that I make, I just want it to go directly into uh, Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. That is pretty insane. And uh, that could that could really do some wonders for, you know, making the asset even scarcer if people are just automatically converting uh, their sales into Bitcoin. So Doro Gusker says Square's hardware wallet will be a multi-signature wallet, which requires more than one private key to complete transactions. And what he says is we have a lot of questions and issues to reconcile, and we'll start with this product direction. Bitcoin first, global distribution, multi-sig to achieve assisted self-custody, and prioritizing mobile use. So some pretty cool things going on at Square and for this Bitcoin wallet. Also, this, I think, was pretty awesome. So Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak calls Bitcoin the most amazing mathematical miracle. Not only that, but he also said that Bitcoin is superior to gold. That's just his opinion, of course, but pretty interesting stuff, right? To have the Apple co-founder saying Bitcoin is superior to gold. Pretty crazy. On July 8th, this was at the Jalisco Talentland Digital 2021 event. Wozniak talked about Bitcoin during his presentation, calling it the only digital gold. And this event where he said this, they're saying that this is the largest connection and interaction event between young talent, specialists, companies, and the government for the development of technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship projects. And Steve referred to gold as limited and noted the difficulty of having to search for and extract the precious metal from the ground. He says gold is limited and you have to look for it. Bitcoin is the most amazing mathematical miracle. I don't invest in Bitcoin, but I believe it's here to stay. So he does say he doesn't invest, in, invest into it. And I wonder if at some point that is probably going to change. I mean, if he really thinks it's here to stay, I would think that at some point he does pick some up. Wozniak's comments come just days after a Mexican billionaire businessman, Ricardo Plago, said that it was absolutely right to refer to Bitcoin as the new form of gold. And Plago published a tweet in response to MicroStrategy's Michael Saylor, which we'll be going over 
some micro strategy stuff here coming up shortly, noting that Bitcoin was much more portable and convenient than gold. So here we have Michael Seeler's tweet. He says, if you are hoping to preserve your wealth for a generation, uh, Ricardo B. Salinas suggests you invest in Bitcoin. The strategy is simple. Choose the highest quality asset you can find and hold all. And he says, that's totally right. Bitcoin is the new gold, but too much more portable transport. Bitcoin is much easier than having uh, in your pockets gold bars. And I know that I'm going to be attacked by gold lovers. So the question for this video is seeing as how the Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak thinks that Bitcoin is the most amazing mathematical miracle and thinks that it's here to stay. Why do you guys think he hasn't picked some up yet? Let me know what you're speculating in the comments below. Now here we have the Bank of America news where they establish a cryptocurrency research division. They've introduced its research, cryptocurrency research team as part of its latest Wall Street push. They report that it formed a new division that will focus on conducting research into the applications of cryptocurrencies. This notably marks Wall Street's most recent push to address the growing demand from investors for more exposure to digital assets. Aiki Shah will be responsible for leading the crypto research team at the Bank of America. Shah will be tasked with covering underlying technologies linked to virtual currencies. And this is Candace Browning. She's the head of global research for Bank of America. And this is what she says. She says cryptocurrencies and digital assets constitute one of the fastest growing emerging technology ecosystems. We are uniquely positioned to provide thought leadership due to our strong industry research analysis market leading global payments platform and our blockchain expertise. So we have Bank of America stepping up into cryptocurrency. And now we have the micro strategy news $395 billion investment firm buying a massive stake in Michael Saylor's micro strategy. They say it has purchased a sizable stake in micro strategy. According to a filing with the SEC, Capital International Investors added 953,000 shares of micro strategy to its holdings. This is, this is it being worth nearly 600 million. And I'm sure this is probably why, probably because they want to get some exposure to Bitcoin. With the investment, Capital International Investors is now MicroStrategy's second largest shareholder. And get this, the investment falls short of Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey's digital payment company Square, which holds over 1 million shares in MicroStrategy. So Jack Dorsey is the largest shareholder of MicroStrategy. According to Fintel, which tracks corporate portfolio holdings based on public disclosures, Capital International Investors has more than $395 billion in assets at time of writing. Following Capital International's disclosure, uh, MSTR stock jumped 2.3% and is now trading at $628. And the company currently holds over 100,000 Bitcoin worth more than $3.55 billion. I should probably know that that is for MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy is the company that holds 100,000 Bitcoin worth $3.5 billion. And we have this Capital International Investors buying a $600 million stake into it, becoming the second largest shareholder. Pretty crazy stuff, right? It seems like a lot of people are accumulating Bitcoin or at least getting some exposure to it now while the prices are pulled back and much, much cheaper. And not just Bitcoin, but of course, the entire cryptocurrency market for that matter. Now, here we have Visa and 50 crypto platforms to enable cryptocurrency payments at 70 million merchants. Visa announced Wednesday that more than a billion dollars worth of cryptocurrency was spent by consumers globally through crypto linked Visa cards in the first six months of the year. The payments giant also said that it is partnering with 50 leading crypto platforms to launch card programs that make it easy to convert and spend digital currency at 70 million merchants worldwide. The Visa CFO says we see a lot of volume on our network of people buying cryptocurrencies at these various regulated exchanges. And as far as we can see, that trend is going to continue. We are doing a lot to create an ecosystem that makes cryptocurrency more usable and more like any other currency. People are exploring ways in which they can use cryptos for things they would use normal currencies for. Among crypto platforms that Visa is working with in its fintech fast track program are Coinbase, BlockFi, Circle, and FTX. The program is focused in part on making cryptocurrency more practical for consumer and business spending. And it says the partnerships will make it easy for clients to convert and spend cryptos at 70 million merchants worldwide, including those that do not accept digital assets. So that'll be pretty interesting, right? To be able to spend your crypto even at a place that doesn't accept digital assets. That'll be interesting. 
Among the features being worked on is letting users spend fiat and earn cryptocurrencies as a reward. And this is the Visa head of cryptocurrency. He says the merchants don't have to change anything. It will be the same as any other Visa transaction to them. But on the back end, the crypto assets are instantly converted into fiat. So that is pretty crazy, right? The, the merchants basically won't have any clue. This is all going on in the back end. So it's amazing just how far all of this has come, right? People uh, speculating as to how, you know, how are people going to accept cryptocurrencies or how are you going to spend cryptocurrencies if people don't even want to accept them? Well, now it's starting to look like if someone doesn't want to take your cryptocurrencies, it doesn't really matter because all that is going to happen on the back end, right? There will just be a transfer or a switch that happens on the back end. So pretty crazy stuff. Our fear and greed index for today is sitting in extreme fear at 20. And we've been in extreme fear. This whole thing is a maxed out in extreme fear from yesterday, last week and last month. So we are in a very fearful time for cryptocurrencies, which usually is a good time to be accumulating. Just saying. Today we have Bitcoin is at $32,000. Ethereum is just under $2,000. Binance Coin at $309. Cardano is at $1.28. XRP is at $0.62. Cents. Dogecoin at $0.19. Cents. Polkadot at $14. Uh, Uniswap at 18 and Bitcoin Cash sitting at $471. And with that said, guys, that is the video for today. So if you enjoyed it, make sure you tap the like. It does help me a ton in growing the channel. And also make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified every single time we put out a video. Make a video like this daily going over Bitcoin, altcoins, and everything going on inside of the crypto space. Also keep in mind, guys, this is not financial advice. I'm just here to document the daily crypto news in this crypto bull run, and that is it. Hope you guys are all having a great day, and I'll see you on the next one.